This audio program contains some very powerful information, and when you apply the principles, the results will speak for themselves. But before you continue with an open mind, realize now, adding more information to your life will not change it. There's a common perpetuated big lie that most people have bought into through their entire lives. The lie is, information is power. The truth of the matter is, action is power. You're going to have to apply these principles to benefit from them. The results come from doing, not from knowing. Let me give you an example. Anytime I'm working with a client, I always like to explain the million pound driving challenge. And here's what the challenge is. Imagine you'd never driven a car, but you'd seen one, but you've never driven a car and you have no idea how it actually works. And I said to you, I'm going to give you a million pounds if you pass your driving test at the end of the year. And here's the conditions of this test. You can have access to all the information, every single book in the world, every DVD, everything on the internet about driving. In fact, I'm also going to give you the best driving instructors, the best drivers in the world. However, you're not allowed to start the car, or you're not allowed to actually drive the car. But at the end of the year, you've got to take your test. And if you pass your test on that first go, I will give you a million pounds. Now, what do you think the chances are of you actually passing your test, having never driven the car, but you've had access to every single bit of information? Now, in 1969, there was a report by Dale. It was called the Cone of Learning. And it talked about how much information individuals would remember and how that information came to them. It said that if somebody read something, they would only remember a mere 10% of the information, only 10% of what they read after two weeks. It said that if you heard the words, you would only remember 20% of it. And if you saw it, say, for example, it was in pictures, you would remember 30% of it. Now, these figures jump up to a 50% if you saw and heard it. So, for example, if it was done on location or if you watched a demonstration of it or maybe you were looking at an exhibition or maybe watching a movie. It jumps up to 70% if you gave a talk about it. It jumps up to a whopping 90% if you do the real thing or you simulate this. You do a dramatic presentation. So, in order for you to get the most out of this course, I'm going to need you to play full out. The more playful you're willing to be and the more playful you're likely to be in these exercises, the quicker and the faster you'll see results in your trading and investing account. Now, one of the things that people want to learn and one of the most powerful things you can learn to do is understand how to improve your confidence or so any sort of emotional state that people want to have. But I want to begin by saying to you the following. Actually, there's no such thing as confidence. And in fact, there's no such thing as a lack of confidence. In fact, there's no such thing as fear or love or attraction or happiness or excitement or anticipation. Now, you're probably thinking, what do you mean there's no such thing? I've experienced those things. What I'm saying is, I'm not saying people don't experience things called happiness or confidence or anything like that. What I'm saying is, these things aren't actual physical things. They're actually processes that take place inside the human body and mind. Technically speaking, they're called neurological processes and we recreate them. Let me give you a, an example of what I'm talking about because I heard somebody once say, some other psychologists say, oh, you can't control. You can't control how you feel. You can't control how you feel in a situation. Let me tell you now, you're wrong. And I'll explain to you. And in fact, I'll give you a very good example of how you can control how you feel. And in fact, I can tell you, show you how I can control how you feel. Here's the thing. I have no idea where you are. And I may or may not have met you before. But the interesting thing that I know is this. That as you listen to what I'm saying to you. And you begin to notice. The gaps in between the rate. At which I'm speaking. As you find yourself listening, I invite you to notice that your breathing is beginning to match the rate at which I'm speaking. Right. Did you notice your breathing was changing at the rate I was speaking? 
the fact that I was able to control something so vital to you, your breathing, I'm able to make everything slow right down. Now, in effect, what I did was I changed your emotional state. And that's one of the most powerful things you can learn to do. As a trader or investor, the number one thing you need to learn to do is to change your emotional state. The funny thing is people say to me, surely it must be some entry signal or some exit signal or some money management thing or to have a fantastic system or a business plan or something like that. No, it's actually the ability to control your state. And here's why. Let's say you've got a goal of you want to have a million dollars. That's not that much money in today's economy, but let's say you want to have a million dollars or a million pounds or or whatever your number is. And let's say your goal is five years from now. And that's your, that's your destination, your destiny of where you want to get to, right? Now, that destiny of where you want to get to is going to be based on the results, the consistent results that you get. Because one bad result doesn't mean a destination. It's going to have to be the consistent results that you obtain, that you actually get. And those consistent results are going to be based on your consistent behaviors. Now, What determines the quality of your consistent behaviors? The quality of your decisions. And what controls the decisions you make? The emotional state you are in. You don't make good decisions when you're feeling bad. You generally make bad decisions. So your state is going to determine where you actually end up, how much money you're going to end up with in your account. So I'll say it again. The number one thing that you need to do to make the biggest difference to your account is to be able to control the emotional state of your body and mind. Now, most people say when they're in a flow state, they're they're able to just produce results. They don't know how they did it. They were in the zone. And they notice when they're anxious or they're tense that they're unable to actually control themselves or they do impulsive things. So in this part, we're going to learn how to control your emotional state. And there's two ways in which we can do this. We can control it by the internal representations. That's a very fancy term for how you represent information in your mind. And the second way we affect our emotional state is with our physiology. That's our posture, the muscle tension, the breathing, your facial expressions. All these things affect your emotional state. And in today's lesson, we're going to talk about how the pictures you make in your mind control your emotional state. Now, in a minute, I'm going to ask you to do some visualizations or imagine certain things. And it's often about this time I hear somebody say to me, or I've had clients say to me, oh, I can't visualize things. I'm not very good at visualizing. I can't imagine things, which is hilarious when you think about it. And often I have to do the following thing. I have to say to somebody, really? And they say, yes, I can't visualize things. I think, okay, you, you just came through my office front door, yes? And I go, what color is the front door? And they go, oh, it's, uh, it's red. And they, and they sit there on this huge red sofa in my office and say, and is the red door brighter or darker shade of red than the sofa you're sitting on. And they go, oh, it's a a bit darker, isn't it? And they go, yeah, that's right, that's absolutely right. And they go, now, let me ask you another question. Are you married? And they go, yes. Or if if they've got a partner or whatever, I say, listen, you know, if your partner was standing next to me, where would they come up to um, um, in terms of height? Because I'm six foot five. And I say, where would they come to? They go, oh, they'd probably come up to your shoulder. I go, really? And I go, are they larger or smaller than me? And they go, oh, it's a bit smaller built than you. And I go, what did he have on the last time you saw him? If he was standing there next to me, what would he have on? They go, oh, he'd have on that denim jacket, uh, the one that I don't like. And it's got a patch there and it's got a rip there and it's got four silver buttons on it. And he's got those trousers. And they're describing in perfect detail. And I go, what was his hair like exactly last time? And they're shaping this person out as if they're real, shape them out with their hands. And I said, listen, you know that door you saw in your mind, the one that you imagined, compared it to the sofa, and that person you hallucinated next to me, that's called a visualization, that's called imagining. And they go, oh, right. Well, I thought imagining things that had to be the same as real life. And I think, no, listen, let me explain to you. If you can't tell the difference between something that you imagined and something that's real, there's a technical medical term for that. That's called crazy, okay? You need to be able to know the difference between something that you imagine and something that's real. Now, the more you do these exercises, 
the better you will become at it. You'll be able to see things clearer, sharper, brighter, and more in focus. It's just that for most people, they aren't consciously aware of the fact that they are actually visualizing. If you daydream or you hallucinate a situation, in fact, I know many guys who are fantastic at visualizing and they don't think they do. Somebody came to me the other day and says, oh, you know what? I keep thinking my wife's cheating on me. And I say, who with? And they tell me what they think their partner's doing with them. That's called visualization. That's hallucinating. So here's what I would need you to do. And I'm going to ask you to visualize these things and just notice the quality of the pictures. And the more you practice these exercises, the better you will become at them. Now, here's the first exercise what I'm going to need you to do. 